Hello, I'm Joseph, and today I want to talk about using Nux for a static site. Now, obviously, this is not the ideal purpose for Nux, but it's definitely possible. If you are looking for like a large static site, maybe look at Hugo. It's not anything to do with Vue or anything else like that, but it's just a really good, really fast um, static site compiler that you can leverage. There's a bunch of themes already built for it, all this other stuff. Um, so yeah, this is just a site I, I was working on. Um, I'm trying to share themes between sites now, so I'm not having so much upwork between maintaining them. And the first thing I ran into was just the excessive amount of JavaScript that gets included, even just for a static site. So this is not in dev mode. This is the compiled version. And I just have a ton of JavaScript requests and, and some payloads too. And I'm not sure why this, I don't need that for this. I do have some interactive stuff for like the headers. So I have like a drop down menu. And then when you go to mobile, it has like a, you know, X and little hamburger icon that it does and opens and closes. That's all with view stuff. That's, that's pretty typical. Um, but I prefer to choose when I actually get to be able to use this. So um, the first thing I did was in the uh, Nux configuration, there is an experimental no scripts and no scripts is exactly what that means. No JavaScript. So if you turn this on any interactive parts that you have in your header, or your footer for that specific page will not have JavaScript available to use. Um, I'm hoping there's a way to work around this, but for the time being, there's just no way to have any JavaScript. So if I go ahead and turn that to true, it'll still compile the site just fine. But unfortunately that means that um, the features that I would go to depend on if it finishes compiling no longer work. So I'm clicking on features doesn't work. If I go to here, you know, it just doesn't work. So you, you have to kind of take that trade off. And so what I did instead was I made a non-interactive nav bar. So if I go to my layouts here and I just turn on nav bar like this, and when I say non-interactive, I'm using CSS, at least for the mobile to turn on or off the um, kind of hamburger icon, but I, I'd leave alone my features drop down because it's, it, it doesn't, I don't really need it. And so for refresh, you can see features it's gone now. And then if I go to mobile, I still get the drop down. It's using the, um, the target hack that you can do in CSS to make that still kind of work. It obviously doesn't re collapse. I don't have a way to actually do that in CSS currently. So that's fine. But you can see now that all of that JavaScript is now gone. There's four network requests. Now there is one other issue I've run into, which is when I go to my articles and I go to my first blog entry, it's fairly long. And the payload here is half a megabyte of JSON code. I don't need half a megabyte of JSON code because the page is already rendered. I don't technically need this. So uh, there's two more experimental flags in the next configuration. There is um, extraction and render payloads. So I, first I set the render payloads to false. And what that let me do is basically half the size of it, which was, I believe it only includes the payload of this page and not the other pages. So if we go ahead and refresh, now the payload is half the size it was before. Uh, but if you want to get rid of it completely, there's another one here that you can set the false, uh, which gets rid of the entire payload altogether. So I'm going to let that finish. And then if I go ahead and refresh here, the entire payload is now gone. And if I go back to the home page, previously it was like 4.2 megabytes. Now it's 1.7 megabytes. And that's literally because that's basically the size of the home page picture that I don't have optimized right now. Um, so pretty straightforward. There's a couple of things I did run it into, which was that I'm using Nux content for the article system, which is you can use Markdown, Toml, YAML, JSON, whatever you want. You can actually query it to a backend database if, if you want to set that up. Um, but I was using content driven mode or driven, you know, document driven mode. And no matter what I do, when I have it set to true, I can't seem to actually render the site. It will error out in the process. So here we go. We get this error and it just keeps saying like all these API content recalls to the backend don't exist. I don't know why, but I, I can't have it enabled, which means that if you're doing anything with any of any custom, maybe um, components that you're using in your custom article section, use content doesn't work because you, it depends on document driven. 
So what you can do is, um, like for example, I have, okay, so for example, I have my table of contents. Um, I was using use content because I wanted to have my table of contents per article. Some of them I don't want table of contents, some of them I do. And I had to take that off and pass in properties. Then on my article slug page, I have it set up here for every page instead of per page. Now technically you can look at maybe a tag and decide to show it or not, or article or categories or, or something I want to set up in the, uh, the attribute section of each individual article up here. But um, yeah, I couldn't use use content. So beyond that, it's fine. Uh, the actual layout for the articles themselves for like the listing page is here, the index page. So you can go and change that. You can add like next page or something like that if you want to. Um, all this is fairly straightforward. This will be in a GitHub repository if you want to pull and use it as is. I don't have any preference on what you do with it. I don't care. Um, just uh, it's, it'll be a good starting point for you if you want to pull from it. Beyond that, there really wasn't really much else to say. Um, there is a preset of static here. There are several, many presets, like GitHub Pages, for example, and some AWS for like Lambda and Amplify. Cloudflare, a whole bunch of these things that you can use to set up if you're trying to use that. So really cool for that. To have it there, do make sure you do have pre-render set for your pages or else they won't be able to run in a static environment, which means that you will host it on like Apache, Nginx, uh, GitHub Pages or S3 static hosting, that type of stuff. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below.